Queens Flip and Danny from cool. the start. So let's do it. So just give you a bit of background. Um, Joe Budden podcast. Um, there's this channel on YouTube that covers all the drama around Joe Budden podcast and New Warrior Moore called The Stop, right? This guy. His name's Danny from The Stop. And he's really good at, you know, kind of, you know, dissecting what's going on in the drama, offering his opinion, doing commentary, kind of the same thing I do with the whole Brendan Shaw thing. But he's really good at what he does. But for some reason, unlike the comedy podcasters, which you have to give them credit for, they don't engage. There's some people that engage with Red Bar for stuff, but for the most part, comedy podcasters don't engage with all the channels that are out there, like mine, like 10 Minutes of Shaw, like Unique, like Comedy Enforcement, Two Days to Try. They don't engage. They just let them do what they're doing. They don't engage because they know it's going to create more drama and more issues. You just let, leave them alone and pretend it doesn't exist. For some reason, Joe does engage. And Joe Budden and his team have a very negative interpretation of Danny from the Stop. They try and like stop him. They don't like his content. They talk bad about him and shit. It's just generally a very adversarial relationship. Really strange, but it's, that's the way. And I guess Danny now is having individual beefs with different cast members of Joe Budden podcast. And this is one of them, a guy called Queens Flip. Him and Danny from the stop don't get along. So this is an ongoing war. Very odd, very strange. Queens Flip and Danny from the stop go to war. If you I don't even know what that means, Flip. I don't even know what that means. That feels manipulative, Flip. Like, the nigga, I feel like every us. response I give, See, you have I, I, think, I think you asked. <laughs> I think that you said you was at battle rap. I never saw you. I slap you in your mouth. Pause. Okay. Me, now spit in your face and I slap you. I think you didn't go to a battle rap event. You wouldn't play with me in a battle rap event. I was Why on would stage I go to the battle the rap event and talk to you? Listen, listen. I would, you I would, said, I would you, have to you battle. said that I will punch you in your mouth. So you don't play. I okay. slap you. Right. I saw a clip at a battle rap event. <laughs> I mean, I, I see you throw water in a girl's rap. face that went to wow. a game. So I wouldn't doubt that. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. And I punched a nigga in his mouth. I understand I did. that. There's, there's evidence and I beat of that. Nigga up in the elevator. I did. It's documented, nigga. But, but and I know it's well documented. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Right, I was you, just, you, like, you, you can tell me I'm ass. You can tell me I'm this, I'm that. You, you can talk about uh, being you outside. Are, you can invite. You're, you're not outside. You. What's the chat saying here? Az, I like not caring. You got allergies, Az. Joe Biden, Um, are you taking Paulie Shaw and the Schmo bathroom breaks? All of the above. All of the above. All of the above. Okay. All of the above. We never ever clarify rumors or speculation on this side of things. Run with whatever narrative you want. Run with it, because deep down, I want to be a rock star anyway. So if you if you're let if you're saying you think I'm taking schmo Paulie Shaw break bathroom breaks, I'm for it. I'm for it. Please, I'm for it. Run with it, because I deep down I want to be a rock star anyway. So if you think I'm taking Paulie Shaw. Schmo breaks, yes. Okay, but we don't clarify. We never explain. Who knows? You never ask a a young lady what they get up to when they're powdering their nose. You know? Who knows? Where are you from Puerto Rico? Are you Dominican or Puerto Rican? I'm from wherever you want me to be, Flip. I don't know what that. Uh, okay, you're not, now you're not, now you're not representing your culture because if you Puerto Rican, oh, or Dominican, so now I gotta represent my culture for you. Like that's gonna are help you things. Dominican or Puerto you're a manipulative dude. Anything I say will be used in your you flip line to do on you the be, show. I'm this not is a how you've always man. been, Flip. I'm not a whatever I say will not be narrative. I'm not a flip you. around. This is what you do. Now you got the inside dude. This is the inside outside clash. We could go there. I will. To school, I come to you right now. I never nigga. said I was outside, I said I'm inside. That's why I'm at this Twitter space. I gotta get ready for work inside, tomorrow. So, uh, so I said, This is the inside. Hey, listen, listen. Daddy's a good troll. I'm not gonna lie. I like Daddy for the stop. He's really good at this. <laughs> Listen, listen, this is an inside outside clash, and we here. I didn't say I was oh, okay. outside, I'm all right? I'm so that's why when you talk about this inside outside stuff, that really don't phase me. All right. You are all right. That's all you, you ever ass. say. That's why and Joe Budden be cooking you on your show. Uh, wait, on his show. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and I'm here. I'm <laughs> Danny, Danny's, a, Danny's toxic. Here, I'm here. I've been ass. waiting for this. Why am I You're asking? Not I'm not going to call you ass because I watch it. It, 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 it. It's like you watch Here's my... the secret. Here's the... Hey, can we it's use another? Like watch my... Nigga, suck my... Here's the secret. And I'm going to give Ian in here, you ass nigga. I got the drop on you. That's the truth. I'm waiting for the right time. I don't give a about where you work. I got the drop because you communicate with people and you talk about people at a location where you work at. That's the truth. 
I'm waiting. I'm wait. I was told to. I'm waiting to show you how ass you are. I'm going to show you and remind why, you all that joke. Why would you say this publicly? I'm confused. There is honestly African American people in in the states are bizarre, bro. Such a bizarre species. You find a lane to make money and to make content and to feed your family, support yourself, where you actually have to talk into a microphone. Nothing else. Just offer your opinion on things going on in pop culture. Even better, offer your opinion on things pertaining only to the people that look like you, right? Black media, urban stuff. You know, they're not even asking you to comment on worldly affairs, worldly news. No, just focus in on your little niche, on your subculture, on your, on your demographic. That's a dream job. You get paid thousands, millions to do that. L loyal fan base. You sell out shows. You have people recognizing you on the street, waiting to take pictures. Why isn't that enough? Why does that have to turn into beef? Why are they arguing like this? Why is he threatening this guy who covers... Again, if anything, having a channel like The Stop dedicated to dissecting everything you guys are doing is a bit of an honor in some way because it shows you're doing something. There's a channel dedicated to just hyper analyzing everything the Joe Biden podcast does this guy's threatening this guy on, on in public on a recorded twitter space wow but shit you can to all that shit you can to all that it's his show he cracked joe those are my friends i don't know you i got the drop on i want you to hear me trevor robinson telling you so you got to be careful when you talk to who know who i got the drop and i promise i promise you that we're gonna have fun not on no fighting shit but it's going to be a situation because I don't want to talk over you. I'm, I'm mutual so you can talk. Jesus Christ. It's going to be a situation where when you see me face to face, I'm going to ask you these questions. That's right. After months of building tension on the content streets, <sighs> Queens Flip and Danny finally got to speak. And there was a lot of stuff that went on. I mean, I argued with Flip about a lot. I basically called out how sometimes I feel like he's trying to manipulate my platform. And Flip called me out for saying that I need to realize that some of the content that I make has implications for people's real lives. And to be honest, all I can do is kind of see things from my perspective. I know a lot of people can try to see things from other people's perspective. But overall, this was a great discourse about the morality, the responsibility of content creators. As I am a YouTuber, not a journalist, many people pay me out to be a journalist. But like I've said in the past, the reason I started this channel is because I used to be on Reddit all day commenting on the Joe Budden podcast. And I was like, let me make one of my Reddit theories a video. And it got 12,000 views. Then I made another video. It got 100,000 views. And I was like, I can't stop. Clearly, I'm striking a chord with people. But... As I've been speaking with members of the show over the last couple of weeks, I've kind of been going through this thought process of, yes, I appreciate people's constructive feedback and criticisms, but folks have to be aware that I get feedback from so many channels, so many people. And I hope that everybody understands that I'm just trying to learn as I go and also allow my voice to grow. And by doing this, I make decisions. Oh, Danny sounds a bit scared, isn't it? Am I am I am I am I hearing somebody moonwalking? Is somebody doing a little bit of moonwalking here? Danny sounds a bit scared. Bless him, man. Is that I feel will entertain my audience because my audience is what matters. Nobody would be paying attention to me. Nobody would even be responding to me. Nobody would care about my content if I wasn't entertaining my audience. And as far as morality goes and people saying that I may be doing things wrong, I don't think I'm doing things wrong. I've always treated everybody respectfully. I don't think Oh, that was a really that was a really dry swallow, isn't it? God damn it, man. This is the thing. That's why you can't do messy stuff when it comes to guys. I just think with guys, that threat of violence is always there. Women can have this kind of gossipy back and forth thing where they're shitting on each other. But I think with guys, you have to always maintain a certain level of respect or you get to this sort of situation. So you, which is why you have to credit someone like academics. Academics knows he's never going to be outside. So you, he always doubles down because he knows he's never going to be in the same place as these people. But I think Danny from the stop realizes 
that there is a possibility that Queens Flip does know who he is in real life, does know where he works, and is crazy enough that he would turn up. Like, if imagine if Danny works at T-Mobile. Queens Flip is the type of person who would pull up to his T-Mobile store and record him beating the brakes off him. You know, he would do that. He's that crazy. Then you can find any audio of me disrespecting someone's family or saying that someone is soft, someone is weak. It's all about the show, really. I break down the podcast like an analyst with a basketball game. So if somebody shows up to the game and they have five points and they won for eight from the field, I'm going to come to the channel. I'm going to say, yo, this dude was terrible on the podcast. If someone shows up and they score in 30 points, I'm going to say, this person was great on the podcast. So I think as much growing as I have to do, I feel like certain members of the show also have to take into account that they're on a big platform, a platform that people will analyze and critique. And I'm one of the people. Nah, you can't be saying all this stuff, man. He said, suck my dick, man. He said, suck my dick. He, he threatened to fucking beat you up at your workplace or wherever you're staying at. This sounds like a whole lot of backpedaling or someone says, Jesus Christ, Danny. Damn it. Who's on the forefront of a discourse about the podcast. And I think that's cool. One thing I wanted to also address is Queens Flip saying he got the drop on me. Basically, I guess he's insinuating that he knows where I'll be. I'm under surveillance. And he said, you know, it's just to have a conversation. I believe him. I think he just wants to have a discourse. I I'll just kind of see. That's what he said. We'll see where that goes over the next coming. Oh, <laughs> he's going to get fucked up in it. He's so scared. Months, but that's my video for today. I want y'all. Oh, Danny Saudi, like the police. What's going on, bro? To kind of have an honest discussion about this in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And I challenge anybody to see it from my perspective. A lot of y'all come into my comment section. Oh, he's reaching. He's doing this and that. But please try to understand kind of the decisions I make. And also realize that most of the feedback about this channel is overwhelmingly positive. Most people saying negative things about me are in the minority. There's people that genuinely rock with the discourse that I establish, the things that I talk about. <laughs> so and if you disagree with me He's and so do it in scared. a respectful way, I'm mostly positive. He's so scared. I help people oh, out if they ever ask man. me a question about YouTube or what I do to make my thumbnails. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. In, in conclusion, in conclusion, this is redacted. You should be allowed to say what the fuck you want about people who are making content online. It's not that difficult. When somebody's making content online, you put yourself out there, myself included, you should be willing to accept the rough with the smooth, the good with the bad. It's part of making content online. There is no such thing as universal praise. If that is a thing, you're in a fucking cult. It doesn't fucking exist. You're always going to get people that like you and don't like you. Part of the commentary scene that makes it interesting is that you can say what you want with no filter because you don't know these people. The moment you start to maybe get too familiar, you start to feel like you do know them, you start to feel like maybe you're better than them, that's what I think is an issue. Like, I think one of the reasons why I'm able to maybe cover a lot of this redacted shit that I cover from the Bapaverse stuff is because I think fundamentally... I don't necessarily think I'm better than anybody I speak on this. Like, uh, again, it's weird to say because I think it goes without saying, but I honestly don't think I'm better than Brendan. Like, I don't think I'm a better human because I don't have some of these worst character traits. We will, or some of these worst character, yeah. We will have our issues. We will have our bad things. It's just funny to point and laugh, you know? When someone suffers something, that, when someone does something dumb or says something stupid. I say something stupid, I mispronounce and say dumb things, I get things wrong all the time, but obviously I'm not at a scale or level of fame that those guys are, so no one's going to care what I say. But I don't think fundamentally I'm better than anybody. I think that's the issue sometimes when you're these type of commentators. It gets to a point where you start to think you're smarter than the people that you're covering. When really and truly, if those guys who are making the content didn't exist, you wouldn't exist. That's to be a form of humility, you know? Like if Brendan wasn't a redact, and didn't keep putting out content, I wouldn't probably have a channel that gets the views that it gets. 
So you kind of have to be a little bit humble about it. You know, you kind of have to know that in a way, these guys are quote unquote paying your bills. So there's that mutual level of, what's it respect, but like humility a little bit. I think that's when you, but on the flip side of things, if you want to be a piece of shit, content creator, commentator, you have to do what academics does. Where you double and triple down on your bullshit. You run with a big acting, you antagonize people, you talk shit about them, but you do it because you know you're never going to go outside and you're never going to see them in public. So you talk shit. That's what you should do. But you can't be in the middle. You have to either be respectful and keep it like that or be a troll, content creator, whatever, and then double down on it because you're not going to be outside. But I think fundamentally, Danny from the stop, maybe he's starting to get a little bit too flagrant with the thing that he was saying so i probably think he was a bit smarter than what he is or maybe think he was smarter than the guys he was covering and now he's gotten to this point because i just think fundamentally also with guys there's only certain level of disrespect you're gonna take you know you're gonna always want to fight somebody especially from the from the same city someone said i think danny's from new york as well right so that's what makes it even more sketchy for him because he's from new york too they all live in new york I feel, I, feel, I feel bad for Danny. What are the comments saying here? I feel bad for him. What are you guys saying in the chat, actually, before I get to comments? Academics duck in the baby oil session with saucy lols. They're going to catch act like Ned Bowery in Deliverance. I don't think so, Koyla. I don't think they're ever going to catch act. I think act. the reason why he's successful and does well is because he plays his role. He plays the position very well. He knows exactly what he is, and he plays there. You know? He stays there. I think that's why he's successful. Because he talks a lot of shit, but he's never outside. He never gets caught anywhere, you know? He's never once been touched like that in that regard. So that goes to show. Um, it was a city way because of Dominic Frere. He shook. Man got the authorities on speed dial. Exactly as said. AZ will never happen when people tuck their tail and podcasters confront them. In com- but AZ, that will never happen when people tuck their tail the podcasters confront them on their commentary. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe there is a... Maybe you're right, Asad. Maybe there is a... Maybe Danny should have doubled down on his perspective and commentary on the JBP more when Queen's Flip came at him. Hey, this is what I think. This is my opinion, blah, blah, blah. Maybe he should have doubled down on it, but he got too shook too quickly. Uh, these guys are always trying to cope from whatever drama they embroiled in. True, true, true. Uh, let's see what the comments are saying. Flip giving you his time of day is just proving that you're doing everything right. Your content wouldn't even reach the people if you weren't watered down opinions. Between the stop and the Reddit, the, 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 the this dead be more entertaining than JBP. Sometimes I just watch this in lieu of the podcast. Can we please take a minute and commend Danny for his professionalism? <laughs> Commending somebody isn't going to stop them from getting their face punched. I love people do this sort of stuff, man. That's like, this isn't very comforting, you know? Like, I have to see these people in real life. <laughs> Personally, I think this is unfair that they're trying to police your content. Personally, I think Joe needs to directly tell them that this is part of the fame. Daddy, you're the shit. Keep it up. Keep going, Daddy. Just a heads up. Anyone who's, who says they got the drop on somebody doesn't have the drop. Yeah, true. That's a good point because if he actually had the drop on you, he would have just done it. He would have just turned up and put the beats on you. So most likely he doesn't, but I think that threat did did shake up Danny for a bit. I think he's he's shook, to be fair. Obviously, the science is touching the nerve. I think it's a win for them to create a narrative about you not disrespecting the pod. Danny, you did absolutely nothing wrong. 15K and get it rocking. Hold your fucking corner, my G. As a small channel, I respect your growth. Don't let... Exactly, that's what somebody said here. Asad, didn't it? You said the same thing, right? Asad said the same thing as this guy. Um, don't let Flip shake you. Joe, put, Joe got hands put on him. Charlemagne got hands put on him. Charge it to the game. Salute. Exactly. Uh, I think Flip is out of line and comes from insecurity. Him talking all tough shows how bothered and conflicted he is by the points makes common way people do that. To be fair, imagine if this happened in a comedy scene. Imagine if the comedy, if the comedian started clapping back. How many channels would fold, you reckon? If the stand-up comedian decided to clap back a bit, right? If Bert started clapping back, Tom started clapping back, Brendan started clapping back, how many of us would, would, would still be around? <laughs> imagine imagine if Brendan said alright cool fucking, oh, fucking 10 minutes to show I know where you guys live I'm coming to your house right now <laughs> I wonder what would happen 
I, I wonder if Kalala said, because I think Kalala would beat up comedy enforcement. I'm not lying. I think Kalala would beat that guy up. <laughs> I think Kalala would beat him up. <laughs> I swear to God, I think Kalala would put the absolute beats on fucking comedy enforcement. That would be so fucking funny. Imagine. I'd love it. I'd fucking love it. I would fucking love it. I swear to God, I'd fucking love it. <laughs> Could you imagine? They all started clapping back, but yeah. To be fair, like... It, it would it would make it actually more entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. It would make it more fucking entertaining. I'd be I'd be I'd be all over if that happened. I wish it would happen. To be fair, 